This video is for people who are new to GIMP. My overall goal here is to just give you a foundation of knowledge about it to show you where all the basic functions are at and what some of them do. If you wish to follow along on your end, I suggest you get a few photos ready in a folder. If you want to use the same exact three photos I'll be using today, I'll leave links in the description to each of them. Also download GIMP if you haven't already. It's free, just Google the word GIMP and click the button to download the latest version. I always pick download directly and then follow the prompts to get it installed. When you first open it, don't be alarmed if your screen looks slightly different than mine. They have changed the appearance over time, but the functionality has pretty much stayed the same for years. I'm going to start by putting a photo into the program. I'm going to take this photo of some mountains and drag and drop it into the gray area in the center of the screen. I'll often get this box talking about the color profile, and I always click Convert. There we go. There are other ways to add a photo, but this is how I do it. GIMP has a lot of redundancies, so there's multiple ways to do a lot of things. When I dropped the photo, a little icon of it appeared on the right. This whole rectangle is called a layer. This section is a little scrunched, so I'm going to drag and drop this edge to enlarge the area. Right now, I only have one layer. Let me drop two more photos into the program. I now have three layers. By dragging and dropping within this area, I can reorder those layers. Much like a stack of papers, if I put a larger photo on top of a smaller one, I can't see the smaller one at all. This bird photo is smaller, so when I put it on top, you can see part of the layer that's beneath it. I can turn off a layer by clicking the eyeball next to its icon, and at any point, I can bring it back. Every time I click a layer, it becomes the active layer, which is an important distinction when you go to learn some of the other things that the program does. Right now, I'm going to make the mountain photo my active layer, and I'm going to remove the other two layers from visibility by clicking the eyeballs. There's a lot of different things you can do with the layers, too much to throw at you in this video, but by right-clicking on one of the layers, you can see all the other options available. Before I move on, I'm going to save my work by going to File, then Save, then picking a folder using this interface. What exactly am I saving? It's the entire project, which is everything in front of you. If I close GIMP and then open that file, I can continue working. It remembers the layers and everything. Let's go back to the top left where these little icons are. These are called tools. They allow me to do all kinds of things to the photos. It may look like there is only 16 of them here, but there's actually 40 of them. It doesn't display them all at once. If I hover above some of the icons, I can see some of the hidden ones. If I see a hidden tool that I want to use, I can right click and select it, which I'll do here to get the pencil tool. The pencil tool is now available, and it's the active tool, as indicated by the darkened square around it. I can then go over and draw on the photo. It doesn't look good, but luckily I can undo my actions by hitting the control button and the Z button on the keyboard at the same time. Each time I hit it, it erases one of the steps I just did. That's a shortcut you'll want to get accustomed to using. When I click on the different tools, the settings for each one becomes visible underneath. It may look overwhelming, but just know you can do very well in GIMP without knowing what all of these tools do. 
I'm just gonna point out some of the ones that I feel are most useful. The first one is the clone tool. I don't see it displayed, so I'm going to hover around until I see it. There it is. I'll right click and select it to make it my active tool. What this allows me to do is take one part of a photo and paint it over another part. Before I use it though, I'm going to adjust some of the settings. It's hard to see the settings, so I'm going to just enlarge the section here. The first option is called brush. I want to change it to a heavier brush, so I'll click the little picture and choose the dark black circle. I'm also going to increase the force to 100. Now when I hover above the photo, I can see my brush. It's a little small for what I'm about to do, so I'm going to increase its size using the size meter in the settings. That's about where I need it. So what I'm going to do with this tool is add some additional trees to this little area here. I'm going to do it by copying some of the existing trees over here. So I'll hover above the tops of those and while holding control, I'm going to left click. This creates a static circle. I'm then going to go over to the area I wanna add the trees to and position myself right here and hold the left click button and move the mouse down all the way off the canvas. And then I'm gonna let go and I'll do it again here. It may not look that good, but you get the idea. You can do a lot of alterations with this tool. If you're following along and this isn't working on your end, just make sure that this photo is your active layer. The one that is darkened is the active one. Another useful tool is text. I'll click on it to make sure it's my active tool. I can then drag out and create a box. And inside that box, I can type something. This picture is from Kluwan National Park in Canada. So I'm going to type that in. It defaults to Arial font, but if I wanted to change it to another, I can change it in this little box that appears above the text. I want to enlarge the text. So I'm going to highlight the text by just swiping it with the mouse. And I'm gonna click the little up arrow in this little box to increase the size. And it's getting so big, it's bigger than my text box, so I'm going to stretch it out here. With it still highlighted, I can also change the color. I'll just make it yellow. I'm now going to switch to the Move tool. This allows me to move the block of text around. Notice that the text has become its own layer, and if I want, I can turn it off by clicking the eyeball. Next, I'll rotate the text using the Rotate tool. I'll grab one side of the text box by left-clicking and holding down, and then moving downward like this, and then letting go. This is just a preview. If I wanna accept the way I've tilted it, I can hit Enter. I can then switch back to the Move tool and reposition it. Now I want to do something with the bird, so I'm going to make sure it's visible and then bring its layer up to the top. What I want to do is make it look like this bird is in the park by basically blending the two photos. I need to make sure the bird is the active layer Another way to tell if it is, is to look for the dotted yellow line that's around it. I'm then going to find the free select tool and make it active. Then I'm going to click around the bird and encircle it. The final click I make will connect to the first point. There's now a dotted moving line around the selection. This indicates that I've selected the area that contains the bird. Next, I'm going to go over to the bird layer and right click it and near the bottom, I'll choose add alpha channel. 
Then I'm going to go up to select and choose invert. There's now a dotted line moving along the edges of the photo. I'm gonna hit the delete button on the keyboard. So what happened is that I deleted a large portion of the photo from the view. By selecting the bird and then inverting the selection, it selected the portion that's outside of the bird, which allowed me to delete it. But the bird still doesn't look like it's actually there. It looks more like a collage right now. So I'm going to do the same action again and trim out more of the area around the bird. And I'm gonna speed up this part because it takes a little bit more time to get the bird fully selected the way I want it to be. It may be hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm basically putting a line right against the bird. There we go. Not too bad. What I just showed you may have been a little bit too much to show a beginner, but I just wanted to dig down deep into one of the tools to show you the kind of magic that can result from using it. I encourage everyone to experiment with the different tools and that way uh, you'll become very good at this program. In addition to tools, there's tons of other functions embedded in the top menu. Under the color menu, I can choose brightness and contrast and using the bar, I can make the bird brighter or I can make it darker. It's just one of the many, many things I can do with the things that are under the menus. I'm gonna consider this image done. So now I'm going to export it out of GIMP so that I can always have it as a separate photo. First, I'm going to go up to file and select save to save my work so far. Now I'm going back under file and I'm going to choose export as. This little box will come up where I can name the file, I can pick a file type, and I can pick a location where I want to save the photo. There are two file types that I use, .jpg and .png. I make it a JPEG. If I want the file size to be small, like if I wanna send it in an email, or if I wanna make it a thumbnail for a video, the photo will lose some detail if you do it that way. For this one though, I wanna keep all my details, so I'm gonna make it a .png. And then I'm just gonna choose export and let it go through the motion here. I now have a photo that's out of GIMP and I can do whatever I want with it. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial. If you got a lot out of it, feel free to hit like and leave a comment. Have fun everybody.